Namaste angels. I'm here to do my Cancer New Moon reading, but it's also going to be like a, I guess, other celestial events reading or a spiritual energy reading. Maybe that's what it'll be. Cancer New Moon and spiritual energies or other events or something like that. Anyway, um, there's a lot going on this week and that's why I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Today is the 21st. It is the solstice. Right now it is 11.09 or 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So most of us have already experienced the day, all that beautiful sunlight. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, and by the way, those of you who watched me earlier on YouTube, if you were waiting for me to come back, I attempted to come back. I It was just buffering. It was my first time even seeing this YouTube live thing on my phone. Um, I, I clicked it, I tried to connect and it just, it never went. So I ended up going live on Facebook instead. I apologize um, if you're not on my Facebook page, but you're welcome to join me. You're welcome to come over to my Facebook page. Uh, so anyway, today's the solstice. Tomorrow, the 22nd will be another day of endings for many of us or thinking about new beginnings, planning, so we can put things in motion, um, at least, you know, by the end of the week. Because the 23rd, 24th, depending upon where you are in the world, will be the new moon. And that's new beginnings. And it's a super moon. And last month's new moon was a super moon as well. The main um, new moon. So when you have two super moons back to back, that's like, it intensifies or it's believed to intensify all of not only the new beginnings, but pretty much just about everything that, that comes with the energy of that moon. Uh, so we have that going on. And then the 25th is the beginning of the month of Tammuz. There are other things on the 24th. It's St. John the Baptist's feast day. Um, it's the feast day of the Immaculate Heart. The 23rd is the feast day of the Sacred Heart. Ra Raphael is outside. I don't know if you guys can hear him. He's trying to say hello. He's Maybe he'll join us for the reading, for healing. Um, it's the last day of Ramadan, which is the month celebrating the delivery basically of um the quran unto muhammad similarly we're celebrating this month and it's the end of we're, the tammuz is the first day of the new month of the Jew jewish calendar but last month similarly compared like with when ramadan um was the month celebrating God bestowing the Torah upon the Jewish people um, via Moses. So, you know, very same sort of stories there. Um, same time frame because it's the same God. Those are both ending and uh, the 24th will begin in celebration of that, at least for um, Muslims and in Islam, Eid. And as I mentioned earlier, the phrase Eid Mubarak basically summarizes um, what the day is going to be about. And that, that phrase uh, translates from Arabic to mean uh, blessed celebration. And so that's what the energy of Saturday is about. A lot, a lot of stuff going on this week. Um, so Tammuz was also a god, a Sumerian god, a Babylonian god. He's also compared to Adonis. And basically he's Osiris as far as I'm concerned. Uh, even I saw like one of the old statues they had of a picture of him and it looked like he was holding a crook and flail too. I'm pretty sure it's Osiris. He's connected to the underworld. Um, he's also connected to having him and his wife having taught the people how to plant and grow food. That's what Osiris is famous for. Um, uh, and famous for life rebirth, life, death, um, rebirth and transformation. That's the, the scorpion king written all over it, you know? So um, I think this is just later vibrations, but not only is it, a, was it a deity? It's also a month. So it's the fourth month of the ecclesiastical year um, on the Hebrew calendar. And I'm going to tell you a little more about it from, or I'm going to read to you a little more about it from uh, Shabbat.org, C-H-A-B-A-D.org. And the title of the article is Two Kinds of Good Lessons for the Month of Tammuz by Sarah Schneider. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I want to get to the reading too. Um, and this is long, but I think it's important for us to hear um, some of this. Every month comes with a bounty of lights, blessings, and challenges that are its particular gift to the year. And this fourth month of Tammuz is filled with paradox, in part because of its infamous distinction as the beginning of our fall from grace. Okay, this is why I think that we need to listen. It's when people begin to forget about what we're supposed to be working on and, and get caught up in ourselves instead. 
The Torah starts in its counting of months with Nisan and Passover, for that was our birthday as a people. And so the year begins with a surge of exhilaration. We escape 210 years of slavery and witness the most mighty and corrupt nation in the world reduced to ruin by the God of Israel. Then, 50 days later, we experience the most powerful revelation of light and truth that has ever transpired on the planet. And yet, despite all these eyewitnesses, encounters with God, we still lost our grip on faith and sinned with the golden calf. This was a transgression of horrendous proportions, which set in motion a downward spiral that culminates next month with Tisha B'Av, the day of inconsolable mourning for our shattered temple and broken lives. Kabbalah teaches that all the failing suffering and darkness of our people throughout its history begins right there with the golden calf. Both of these months, Tammuz and Av, are going to be times of enormous blessings, or were going to be times of enormous blessings until the people messed it up. Although the Torah was revealed at Sinai, Moses spent the next 40 days working together with God to bring those lights down into sentences, paragraphs, and practices that would pull God's consciousness down from the heavens into the moment by moment daily life of Jewish people. Okay, that's what we're supposed to be doing or that's what what's been happening for us right everybody's consciousness here are being raised but also God's consciousness coming down to meet us in the middle and that's what he says he's going to do in the Bible that's what it says I'm going to merge heaven and earth that's what the new Jerusalem is the people back then could have had it when I say like we're not reinventing the wheel all this stuff is written it's happened you know time and again in, in, in the scriptures and throughout history this is one of those times on the 16th of Tammuz, we expected Moses return to camp, tablets in hand. We miscalculated by six hours, and when he delayed, we assumed the worst and imagined him dead on the mountaintop. We panicked some more than, some more than others. The women, not at all. Okay, listen to this. The women didn't panic at all. Divine feminine, we are supposed to be leading here. We are supposed to be leading and in leading. Yes. Some of us will follow. We're still leading. Some of us will follow a other, another, a more uh, experienced, talented, learned, wise leader, but we're still leading as a collective of females or, or and, or, you know, feminine energy. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what they did before. Um, the Egyptian multitudes that, were, that accompanied the Israel, Israelites quickly regressed to old ways, to the security of graven images, and they convinced misery, many Israelites to follow suit. So this was a group of people, and I, I told you this before too, that it wasn't just, you know, Jews or Hebrews, and it wasn't at all that what we know today to be Jews or Hebrews. I mean, these are... Um, not Europeans. These are, pe these are people from the Middle East and, you know, the Middle East of what, basically, especially at that time, it was just one large area um, that some might call Africa. And <laughs> Egypt is certainly part of Africa. And um, they were all mixed together. You know, they had different beliefs, but they had come together, Egyptians and Jews. And they were all on this march 600,000 of them, 144,000 of them illumined and another 500,000 elect. Same as what's happening right now. The Egyptian multitudes that accompanied them, accompanied the Israelites quickly regressed to their old ways and to the security of graven images. And they convinced many Israelites to follow suit with Aaron's reluctant assistance. He, so Aaron didn't want to, that's Moses' brother. They fashioned a golden calf to replace Moses as leader and guide. Okay, how ridiculous is this? But it happened. <laughs> Upon his descent, so that means coming back down, when Moses beheld their desecration, he cast the tablets on the ground. He just dropped, he had walked with these big tablets from a mountain, he just threw them down. They shattered and we lost the moment. We were six hours away from eternal paradise. 
If we had closed the deal, if the tablets had entered our possession, the 17th of Tammuz would have opened the gates to the ultimate paradigm shift. Death would have been swallowed up forever and we would have stepped straight into the golden age of the, basically the Messiah and the world to come is what this is saying. It's Mashiach in um, Hebrew. That means the Messiah. That's what this, that's what was scheduled for this month. Maybe it's what's scheduled for this month for us again. Maybe we shouldn't blow it this time. Maybe we should get focused. Instead, it became the start of all our woes. And yet God always plants healing tools inside our hardships. Since Tammuz is the month of our fall, it must also provide the key to its repair. There's Raphael. So as, as I say, repair and, and like healing. There he is. Each month brings down the energy of a particular Hebrew letter and a special talent. The book of formation associates to moves with the sense of sight and the letter shit, C H E T. These are the special tools God provides to repair the damage that occurred this month. What is their gift? How do we crack the code? Always the place to start is with the first mention in the Torah. I'm going to skip past some of this or maybe the rest of it. I think the rest of it, I think you guys got the idea, but I didn't really get into the part about the good, <laughs> the two kinds of good. Um, Yeah, this is long. If you guys want to read the rest of this, again, it's at www.shabad.org, C-H-A-B-A-D dot O-R-G. And the title of the article is Two Kinds of Good, Lessons for the Month of Tammuz. And the author's name is Sarah Schneider, S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. And I think that you'll find it enjoyable, but I'm glad that I got to get out the parts that sort of um, relate and, and hopefully you, you know, you saw the connections to, to what we're going through now. Um, and we can use them as lessons learned so we don't repeat the same mistakes again. I'm going to begin with my copyrighted cross and I'll be glad when I can stop saying this. Maybe I should <laughs> like, uh, in implant it on my videos, um, watermark it on my videos or something like that, because it's not just like when somebody does a work, um, basically they can, they can copyright it. You know, the, the work is theirs from that moment. But I went that other step to register my spreads with the copyright office of the United States government. Um, and so that's why this is, that's why I need to, I need to start mentioning it. Uh, well, I need to start mentioning it because there are crooks and thieves and I, and I apologize for the rest of you um, that I have to keep saying this now. Anyway, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to use that cross. Um, I'm going to use all my copyrighted spreads, all three of them. And I'm beginning with happy family, which is a four, another 11, 11. Didn't I say I started this reading at a, it was 11, 11 and opening to two or and journey, which is another 11. Happy family. Ooh, deceit is back. That was here last month. Happy family. Anxiety in reverse. I like that. Happy family. I'm not feeling that deceit is going to remain with us throughout the entire two weeks. That could be here maybe for now when I'm, look, as I say that, I love how I did that in front of you. I'm, I'm glad that it happened in front of you. Um, because what I was, what I was saying was that it might have come through upright because of the time of when I'm doing the reading, like this moment right now sort of falls into the last period where I said like for two weeks, there would be people that were more, uh, we might feel increased jealousy and envy and all these things. Um, but I think for the next two weeks, which is for what this reading is, we'll be, we'll see an end to that. And then here it is in reverse now.
also in reverse, however, I don't like this one so much, is Second Chakra, Archangel Ariel. That's how she looks when she's upright. And that's our overall energy. This is the feminine's feelings about herself right now. Um, again, this, this reading will cover not only the um, days that I mentioned, but for the next two weeks. Adjacent possibilities in reverse, the feminine having narrowed down her choices, which is something that we should be doing with this new moon. And if there's like, you know, anything you've been thinking about, like wanting to do, anybody you've been thinking about wanting to do or, you know, approach or whatever. And, um, you didn't make it happen before you were just like getting stuck in your mind leading up to this. Like now's the time with this cancer new moon and with Mercury, um, sort of lingering with it to bring things that are from our mind into our heart and vice versa, and then put them into actual action. It looks like the feminine, um, in large part doing that narrowed down her choices. She has picked which door she's going to go through the masculine about the feminine man holding a heart in reverse. Ouch. No, he's saying no, not ouch. His heart's just not on his sleeve is what I'm hearing. My heart's not on my sleeve. He's, he's saying that he knows that he, um, what's the word I'm like shut down, closed off. He knows that he may have been shut down and closed off before and that he needs to turn that around. So it, that's why it looks like ouch because yeah, shut down and closed off is in good. <laughs> um, but it's the masculine realizing that and realizing that I guess what I was saying right before I started this, when I was talking about the cancer moon with mercury and how the two of them together allow us to, or encourage us to actually take action. Whereas before we may have been like sitting on our hands. So the same, th something similar for the masculine going on, um, as well with regard, specific regard to the feminine. He knows that in many cases he has been shut down and closed off distant. That's the word I was looking for distant. And he's going to fix that is what man holding a heart in reverse means in this position here. Okay. The masculine with relation to himself. Action in reverse. I guess that fits right with this because this is another indication of inaction. Action in reverse is inaction. So this is where he is now and he knows that he wants to get here. He wants to be like this. That's what he's going to be working on, I guess these next two weeks. Okay. The masculine with relation to the union angel of love also in reverse. Oh, masculine man. Well, one thing that this card means, and I think it's the one, the reason that the masculine put it here. Um, the reason he wants to use is that it can represent like a past or even a current I guess for some separation, but the longing for the other partner and the longing to, to fix it. So I guess in that sense, these cards do fit together in reverse these three that he's selected. So again, um, this one is him feeling dis distant and like disconnected, um, shut off, shut down, closed off, but wanting to take that, change that and, you know, make a move toward the feminine, which again goes really, really well with the planetary alignment, um, 
and you know with the moon mercury and the moon in particular this is a card well it's action and when it's re when it's reversed it reflects inaction but i th think sitting here with this one um, where the masculine was already describing how he was feeling this is just like supporting that and saying yeah i haven't been able to move i've been like immobile um in some respects but i i I miss you, basically, is what this one is saying. I miss you, and that's why I want to fix it. I don't want to be man holding a heart upside down, and, you know, I don't want our union to be angel of love in reverse anymore. So I'm going to take that action. All right, so overall, this is the problem. <laughs> this, is the, this is the perfect card for overall. Rest and rejuvenation, which is essentially about balance. And look at the number, you know representation basically of the divine masculine right there being the representation of, of God um, or, you know, their higher and highest vibration as a collective um, in reverse also. So there's the imbalance being reflected. Outcome. The magician also in reverse. Magician and the mirror. The magician in reverse. So the outcome is him still feeling like he doesn't have all the tools. Wait, I got to feel this. It's like he's not using the tools because the magician in reverse means that you have everything you need. The time is right. It's a warning, basically, the magician in reverse. It's a, it's a warning not to miss an opportunity. It's kind of, it's kind of like... Um, a combination of the magician, major arcana card number one, and the four of cups, like together, because it's a warning saying like the time is right. You're right. You have the power. Use it like don't don't miss this chance. It's just bothering me a little bit as an outcome. You know, that the outcome is a warning. Don't miss the chance, masculine. When he's saying here that he's he's going to take action. I think we're going to have to pray for them because um, there may be some. Remember, our overall energy here, too, is also second chakra in reverse, too. Like everything's which is the divine masculine poor thing. He's just completely off. Everything is off. Um, what would he have us to do? Well, I got to do it this way. So I'm turning this back in reverse. What would he have us to do, um, or surrender toward making this work and maybe helping him, maybe leading like the divine feminine is to do. This is the same card the divine feminine got last month. I'm pretty sure about it. He wanted us to take off the mask and to cut our cords to other people, places, and things that don't resonate with the union. Maybe we're in part the reason why he's upside down because um, we still got cords to cut ourselves too. We got to make some changes with this five in our lives as well. Okay, what in addition to this action he plans on taking um, and this opportunity he's not going to miss. I'm putting that into the universe. Uh, what else is he willing to do or surrender toward the union? To get into balance. Oh, okay. I feel so much better. This is just like last month where I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on with this spread? What's going on with the masculine? And it didn't fit with the cards that I have over here. Because over here I got soulmate, twin flame, the two of water. You know, and it's just like, the, it's just like last month. Wow. Okay. Um... <laughs> Yin and yeah, he's really he's willing to work on getting into balance and being able to take this action. Okay, I feel so much better. And what would the universe have the two of us to do and or surrender um, toward bringing everything together? The temple path now in reverse. Temple path in reverse. You know what I think the temple path in reverse is? A warning, not unlike the one that I just read about or the temple path in reverse let me explain it this way what the card means when it's in reverse it can mean that you're too focused on the earthly the worldly um possessions things uh 
like the golden calf, like getting caught up in foolishness. Maybe that's the opportunity that we're at risk of missing is the paradise, entering the paradise, because we, similar to those before us, are focused on the golden calf or we're at risk of, of doing that. Um, the universe is asking that we refocus our energies and attentions uh, toward our spirituality and away from the earthly with this card. Okay, that was an emotional roller coaster for me. <laughs> not not exactly like last month, because last month I got that. I mean, I I still can kind of feel it. At least when I'm thinking about it, I you know I'm brought back to it. I didn't get that just now, but it, I had highs and lows. Okay, so recap: um, the feminine, <laughs> the feminine for the most part, um, with the exception of the cords that she has yet to cut kind of, you know, getting herself together. She's made some decisions at least and narrowed things down of what she wants and doesn't want. Um, so that that's, you know, at least a start, if not more. The masculine feeling about the feminine that he's admitting that he's been, you know, removed sort of and distant and disconnected. And he's promising to like get back, okay? Bring it back, um, turn himself around and his life around, take action. He may have been sitting on his hands before and just sort of maybe moping, maybe doing some, oh, woe is me. Uh, he's he's going to stop that because he wants the union um, to be, you know, upright and, and standing, good standing and all that, too. Then the universe warns us here with this card. He tells us the, that we're in balance and particularly maybe the masculine in balance and then warns us that. There's like no need to be like we got every single thing that we po possibly could need in order to make whatever we want to happen, happen. And now's the time like <laughs> to get on the path, get on the path. We're like straying away from the path. We, this is telling us not to miss the opportunity in um, getting back in alignment with the universe so that we can have this be on this temple path and have what the, what the universe wants to bestow on us. Um, in addition to balance on both sides, not just for the masculine, but for both of us at that point and, and whatever else comes with the temple path and with paradise and all of that. Okay. I feel much better. <laughs> you know what we didn't see yet? The goddess of the moon. And she shows up every time I do a reading. So that's interesting. Uh, that's why it just stood out to me. All right, I'm gonna go to my spread of nine, also copyrighted, beginning with the two of water, a relationship that continues to grow closer, forgiveness and the positive resolution of a conflict. Opening to the six of fire, victory, good news, it's on its way, public recognition or awards. These new cards are so slippery. To fell, they are the king of fire. Focus, focus, focus. Communicate with vision and be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. And also the five of water. Things not turning out the way you'd hoped. Not seeing the positive of a situation and crying over spilled milk. Somebody needed to see those. I'm putting them back in arbitrarily. The ace of fire is what's on the bottom now, though. An exciting new opportunity. Career advancement and changing your life now. A brand new start, but opening to the three of air, great sadness. Take time to heal. There's a need to forgive yourself and others. This is an ending maybe that gives way to this new beginning. So that's why there's sad, but we, you know, like the cycles of life and now it appears there in reverse, although there's no reversals in this deck. Three of air at the bottom. And here's that four of water I've been talking about. Missing an opportunity, discontentment or boredom. Open your eyes to the possibility. So we've got to open our eyes and look in the mirror. And now that I'm thinking about it, the name of that card with the magician, it's magician in the mirror. we got to look in the mirror to recognize our own power. Like when you see your reflection, what's staring back at you? It should be a powerful person. 
is what the universe wants you to know. And so if it's not, that's what you got to work on the next couple of weeks. Um, your self-confidence and self-esteem, self-image. And coming to the seven of earth, seeds well planted, a temporary pause in action maybe, um, and unnecessary worry. So if you're panicking, there's no need. This three of air is still standing up. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's still there. Um, I think that's hurt that's coming from, again, the cords that are being cut, the endings that are being had. Wow. Let's talk about new beginnings. The overall energy now is the Ace of Water. I started with the Two of Water, now the Ace of Water. Another really, really awesome card. Falling in love or the resurgence of a relationship, spiritual growth and enhanced intuition, maybe even a new home. Masculine is the wheel of Archangel Michael. A time of positive change. A situation suddenly moves forward. Maybe you suddenly get up and take that action. Fortune is on your side. So it's an, again, it's an awesome time for you to do it. Don't miss it. Surrounded by the nine of water, your dreams are coming true, masculine. Go for them. Your wish comes true and concerns fade away. You have a love of life. Ah, this is why in your subconscious, justice fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right and stand up for your beliefs. Justice coming through, representing the queen of swords uh, and Libra, a sign of Libra, other air signs, Gemini, Aquarius, the wheel here representing maybe Scorpio it can also be Leo, Sagittarius, Taurus, Aquarius, He is the king of water. I was just talking about the scorpion king himself. Trustworthy, compassionate, respected, and cultured is the king of water. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice and charity work, which is love. And this, uh, this just came to me. I forgot to mention it to you, but I have the king of water mirroring justice. And on the 24th, we have Venus, which rules Libra, Taurus, and Gemini mirroring uh, or conjunct rather uh, <laughs> um, mirroring here, but in, in the sky conjunct favorable conjunction Pluto, which is the ruling planet of the sign of Scorpio. So basically we have the King of Cups and the Queen of Swords getting real, real cozy on the 24th. And I think right here in our spread. King of water can be, again, a Scorpio, also a Cancer for the new moon, maybe, um, or a Pisces. Pluto, by the way, in retrograde still and will be, I think, until September 28th. I think that's when it goes direct. The feminine is still surrounded by conflict and the five of fire. So we had a five before, attachment. That can be what this is representing, too. Um, this five of fire could be somebody you need to cut off competing goals, bothersome details and conflict with others. Feminine subconscious, the aid of water, a desire to move on. This is what we should, we're, this is what she's thinking about. What we're thinking about the search for something more meaningful, maybe our temple path paradise. This is what we want. Spiritual and emotional growth. Crowning. The five of earth still feeling lack, fears surrounding money. We're too obsessed with it though. The universe wants us to let go. There's also a wisdom to accept help from others to, on the more positive side and for some uncertain self-employment. Some can also be, this can be the divine masculine coming through too. I mean, I don't think it's only him. It's here crowning. So it's attributed to both. But I think in some respects, this is him coming through with, um, fear of abandonment, okay, with abandonment issues. And that's why he was disconnected. Like if I give my whole self, what if, you know, 
she, he, you know, whomever the divine feminine is, what if they leave me, basically? So I'm going to withdraw. I'm, I'm falling in like too deep, basically. How our overall energy says, like falling in love, that's what was happening. Like just becoming too overwhelmed by it. And if they leave like the others, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm, you know, that's what this five of earth is saying to me now. At the root, life experience or the tower in the tarot, a significant life event, a powerful revelation that leads to change. It's time to spread your wings. The tower for me is a neutral energy. A lot of people look at the tower and, you know, say, oh no, it's a horrible card. But to me, it's not always a horrible card. I mean, you know, it can come with some negativity, but at the same time, it's anything that sort of like shakes your world up all of a sudden. And that can certainly be good things like crossing the nine of water. It can be because you're overwhelmed with joy when your wish is granted. Now for the feminine crossing the five of fire, maybe it is something, you know, a little bit more, maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's a cutting off a friend, you know, or, or ending a relationship with some other family member or something that you never would have expected to that it's sort of life shatter. It sort of shakes you up because you weren't expecting this. This is somebody who you believe loved you. And now you're finding out that they don't, you know, that it, it's been deceit like that card we saw before. And it's time to cut them off at the heart of the matter. And you look how we have the fives crossing the five. Okay. We need change in both of these areas, change in our finances and in our, the way we feel about ourselves, our confidence, you know, and being afraid, our fear, letting go of that. We got to change all of that. And we got to change our, you know, surroundings where, you know, as it relates to some people here on the side of the feminine at the heart of the matter, the two of air, we got a decision to make being, and we're unable in some cases, unable and unwilling to make that decision. We've reached a stalemate and we're pretending that there is no problem. All right. The next card is upright. I'm going to pull it for the five of fire. The ace of air. Yep. Somebody's got to be cut off. That's what the ace of air does. Brilliant new ideas and inspiration, seeing the truth of a situation. Cause you, maybe you find out all of a sudden this person doesn't love me. Um, and I got to get rid of them. And that may lead, you know, result in a challenging beginning, depending upon who they are. Five of earth. Decision also may be, for some, it's connected to this two of air decision. For others, it is what I was saying before, fear of abandonment. So we're, you know, here we are with the lovers. We're afraid, though, to make this five and six together in 11. Intimate relationships, carefully weigh your options. Good health. And lastly, the two of air. Boom. This is the devil, ego. A false sense of entrapment, being overly focused on material things. That has to do with that five up there too. Too much worry and whatnot, like as if the universe is not going to keep its promise. God is not going to keep his promise. So we've got to let go of that. And, you know, we could be manifesting negative or fear-based thoughts. Again, fear of abandonment, fear of, of lack. We're bringing that into our lives with this five of earth. And now here to get back to the temple path, um, in that sense, we have our worldly and earthly things and this devil energy. That's what ego translates to in the traditional tarot, the devil opposite love. So it's like, which one do you pick? You know, you want worldly stuff or you want love and who is love? What is love, right? God is love. The universe is love. I'm going to go to romance cards. I think. Beginning with soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. And opening to make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Soulmate. Wedding. This situation involves marriage. Here, opposite soulmate. And healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents, but not just your parents, any and everybody um, who could impact your life so much as to do this to you, right? Shattering and, and moving. Um, anybody that would prevent you, whose energy could prevent you from moving forward is with whom you need to heal a situation, whether that means by cutting them off and walking away from them. And look, oh, look what they wanted me to see just now. Reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. So for those of you in separation, um, 
Yeah, whether you walk away from them or whether you repair the relationship. You got to, you know, whomever you need to heal a relationship with is, is what you got to do. Make the effort to do that and towards your union. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Overall energy is heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. Top the wheel, attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. So all of a sudden, the masculine goes from being upside down like he was in the other in the other spread to turning right side up and things going his way. Fortune is on his side because Jupiter comes through with its luck and its support. And Archangel Michael comes through with his blessing and his aid, his help. And that um, helps them to, enables them to put out love and positivity. And so that's what they receive back. This is law of attraction. Atop the nine of water. Separation. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. This is in connection to, again, going back to the other spread, the separation ending for some. That angel of love representing the fact that some were in separation and wanting to get back. On the other cards, representing that there was distance, there was separation. Even if we were together, there was separation. The masculine's wish coming true that he's able to rectify that now. And there's your justice. And to chop that justice, to go along with that, um, because he's turning the situation around, is romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. So now rather than pulling away, withdrawing, he's going to, you know, unleash. He's going to turn it all around. He's going to do what is right for him, what he knows is right for him in his heart, and what ends up being right for everybody involved. Um, and that is for him to use that energy of the Cancer Moon together with um, Mercury to explore his feelings, put that into action. Here atop the king of water, the king of all love and emotion with the feminine is express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. So we don't have to sit and wait maybe for him. Maybe that will encourage him. We can encourage him to, you know, get out of his bag, so to speak, that he's been in by us making, you know, the first gesture where we feel that's appropriate. If you, you know, if you feel nudged, don't ignore those nudges here. Exactly what I was saying was going on is what's going on. This five of fire is a family issue for some. It's a spouse. It's a, you know, the, our child's other parent. It's our, you know, our sister, our brother, our mother, our father. It's something that has prevented a good friend or who we thought was a good friend and they're not, you know, we, they, we thought they were so awesome that we considered them practically like family. And now we're finding out, you know, they're, they're worse with friends like that who needs enemies, like that sort of thing. We got to cut them off. Atop the eight of water and this desire to move on is playfulness. So when we're trying to figure out how can we, you know, how do I make this happen? Or how do I approach even the situation? It's through playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Here atop the lovers and the... Boom. I don't even need to finish my sentence. Atop the lovers is soulmate. Boom. Yes, this is your soulmate. Um, atop life experience. Wow. This makes a lot of sense when we're looking at it more so as life experience rather than necessarily the tower. Forgiving and learning, right? This is we're learning from the life experience. Whatever it is we went through. And it may, for some of us, have to do with a structure, have to do with a tower, our home, or where we worked, or something. Something's changing about that, um, you know, good or bad. And we're taking the lessons learned from it, and we're forgiving ourselves where we need to, and we're forgiving others where we need to do that. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. For the feminine, also, this is crossing this healing family issue. So it has to do with that healing these family issues, right? And for the masculine, it's crossing 
where we had been again in separation or where he had been distant and him praying for, you know, the support and the strength from the universe to help him to get out of that funk, taking the lessons, the positive lessons learned with him, um, forgiving himself and then moving on, you know, moving forward back toward the union. Beautiful. At the heart of the matter, chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. And that enables us to make a decision. Where am I going? What am I doing? Who am I cutting off? I'm cutting off this situation. I'm ending this situation or circumstance in my life. I'm going to explore my romantic feelings. I'm forgiving myself. I'm forgiving them if they hurt me too. I'm going to express my love regardless of whatever you know else has happened or whatever else has transpired. This is my soulmate. This is for whom I've been wishing. You know, wherever, any direction you come from, it's... All roads lead to soulmate here. All roads lead to what I said was the perfect recipe for love this weekend, the 24th, the King of Water and the Queen of Swords coming together in a favorable conjunction. This is what's available for all of us. I didn't know what cards I was going to use. I have so many here that I did not use, but I want to at least use as many as I can for the advice. Wow, I have more than I thought even I realized. Um, from my angel therapy cards, I'm beginning with Twin Flame. The answer to your question involves a spiritually based romantic relationship. And they wanted us to see vegetarian, vegan, fresh, organic fruits and vegetables give you a boost of high life force energy, which elevates your spiritual frequency. So maybe for the feminine here, thinking actually based on the other spread, increasing our frequency, maybe we want to um, try to go the next two weeks, a vegetarian diet, a vegan diet, or as often as we can, eating fruits and vegetables instead of meat, maybe. Have you asked your angels for help with this? Your angels want to help you with this situation. However, they require your permission before they can intervene in your fair, free will choices. We have that opposite twin flame. And now having ended up at the bottom, God box, write any worries, concerns, or desires on a piece of paper that you put into a special container called a God box as a way of letting go and allowing the divine to help you. And we have that opposite asking your angels to help you. So we have asking your angels to help you with also putting your concerns and dreams and wishes, whatever they are, in a box for God. Lastly, it wasn't going to be this one. It was going to be this one. Sacral chakra, just like the other spread. You are highly sensitive to chemicals, additives, processed foods, and energies right now. Respect your sensitivities by avoiding harsh items, situations, and relationships. You know, this is a harsh situation. He needs to turn it around. This is something negative we've got going on. We need to turn it around. Also, fairies. You have a strong bond with the fairies, and your life purpose involves helping Mother Nature. God box. And we're back to have you asked your angels for help with this. So those of us who haven't should. Overall energy is indigo. The person you're inquiring about is an indigo, meaning a highly sensitive natural born leader. Hashtag creepy deck, begin with spiritual growth. I almost started with union, by the way. Um, and it would have been union, soulmate, two of cups, it, everything, you know, awesome. It's still turning out pretty awesome. And opening right away to communication, which I love to see, with our, especially connected with our overall energy from the romance angels of heart-to-heart -heart conversations. So there that is. And now it's taken over here at the bottom. And opening to young female youthful spirit of fun to shine feminine 
And now she's taking over. And children. Maybe that's the family issue. The children are attached to the family issue. Young female back. I'm going to cut. What was there? Fun times is what they wanted us to see. And now control in reverse. The overall energy is short term in reverse. We're going a long way here. We're going the distance now. But in order to do that, some other things are coming to an end. It's the end of an era. And when I open this deck, we're going to join in voluntarily, you know, get back in the game. That may be specifically for the masculine. Um, when I started shuffling this deck before, I started with retirement. And I thought some people's divine masculines will be retiring. But I was thinking like, I don't mean in terms of them being like 65. I mean, somebody, somebody's may, but that's not what I meant. Like in terms of them being 65, but in terms of them like changing what career they had been working in, like suddenly that's changing. And sure enough, the next card that I opened to opposite retirement was self-employment. So that going on for a lot of you guys too. Opening to self-care right now. Into Venera and relationship dynamics. Now that at the bottom. Okay. Decisions, just like the heart of our matter um, with the two of air. <clears throat> And the overall energy is spiritual growth, which is the exact same title or, you know, card that I started with, with the hashtag creepy deck, spiritual growth, and what this eight of water represents as well, too. And the temple path, um, what that can mean for us as well. Lastly, speaking of cutting cords, it's the sword, Archangel Michael, trusting heaven, you are safe. Angels stand close. Surrender your concerns and allow a miracle to occur. And opening to Lady Venus herself. Downloads and understanding. Truth is being revealed. Deep insights are coming from heaven and the astral realm. Divine director. Intervention and purpose. Divine intervention is occurring. Know that you're being guided. Happiness is your purpose. And Sir Nunos, life force, express your driving passion. Sensual and sexual powers are increased. I can see something happening with the chemistry between the King of Water and the Queen of Swords, where this is concerned, and that it's, they don't have to apply, be those signs that can apply to anybody. I mean, under Venus and Pluto this weekend. The overall energy is Krishna devotion. Trust your spiritual guidance. Your commitment has been recognized. You are loved unconditionally. Ooh, this one jumped out by itself. Okay, let's see what this is. For everyone, Master Buddha, increased awareness, deep connection, trust your inner voice. I love that. For the masculine from that same Keepers of the Light Oracle, 
Serapis Bay, ascension. Move into your true self. Rise above the darkness. The light is here. I think this is perfect to help him get turned around. Those cards that he had upside down in the original spread. I think um, if he yeah moves into his true self, and recognizes that what's been keeping him down is the darkness. You know, what's been keeping him in a funk is the darkness and rise above it. Let the light, you know, that he's, that already is within, let it out and let it shine. Let it illuminate everything, you know, within and around him. And, you know, he can, he can conquer. He has every single thing he needs, all the power he needs to do whatever he needs to do. Feminine, Lady Nada, heart awakening, awaken to acceptance and divine love. Give and receive in balance. And boom, self-employment. <laughs> I guess I knew there was a reason why it was everything I say, even though it seems random and unrelated, it always means something. So I should have known. Um, but here's that self-employment card I was talking about. So it's for some of the masculine. They're not really retiring but they're like retiring from what they had been doing. They're, they're leaving their jobs um, or maybe some of them were laid off, I'm getting to. They're like reinventing themselves. For the feminine from the butterfly deck, body changes. This could be as far as our, as part of our awakening, our actual DNA does go through transformation as well. And I'm feeling that that's what that's about. From the hashtag creepy deck, obstacles in the masculine's way. He needs to put, he has the power, the strength and the power to push these out of his own way. He's gonna be his own Lord Ganesha over the next two weeks. And maybe show up at your door like this, <laughs> feminine as the courting man. Or maybe this will be you expressing your love toward him instead. From the angel therapy cards to the masculine, vacuum away fear, masculine. <clears throat> that five of um, earth, let's suck it up. Call upon archangels Michael and Raphael to lift fear-based energy from you, your surroundings, this situation, and everyone involved. And that prayer will be answered. Feminine, the fairies are back. You have a strong bond with the fairies and your life purpose involves helping mother nature. So I did a video this earlier today that was sort of random um, of myself just talking to you guys about how I was spending my solstice and it was about giving back to mother nature as opposed to taking from her. And maybe they, that had a purpose too. Maybe it was to share the, a message um, because that's what's coming through now with this card about the fairies is that more of us need to like work, focus on giving back to the universe, um, maybe more so than what we can get from it. And then because you're not looking for it, you'd be amazed at what it bestows upon you. Masculine from the energy deck, first chakra, Archangel Michael in reverse. The first chakra is the root chakra. So this is like your whole being upside down. Um, but I know you're working on it. So this is just another, another warning, I guess, for you, uh, and guidance as to what parts of yourself on which to work root chakra feminine, the garden and the gate in reverse. This is another indication that we've made a decision. We've chosen, do we want to, you know, keep walking this way? Or are we going to enter the gate? We've made a decision, whatever that means for us. That's why it's in reverse. And maybe that's why we're cutting somebody off here. Once and for all. From the angels to the masculine. The moon. <laughs> here it is. I'm like, where is the dawn moon? I've never done a moon reading where the moon didn't show up. Here it is. Now, the moon, not only um, in the tarot, represents a sign of Pisces. But the actual moon is the ruler of the zodiac sign of cancer. So it should be really, the moon should be really at home right now um, with this new moon in cancer. Important psychic insights, masculine, okay? Pay attention to your intuition too. Events behind the scenes, things are going on that you don't know about, you know, to help you, to support you. The angels, the universe here supporting you, even if you can't see it. So because of that, you need to release 
fears that are holding you back. You need to move forward with confidence, knowing that the universe has got your back. Feminine, the high priestess. We got a very similar card. And this is the, this is again, like the water, the air and water of the king of cups and the queen of swords. This high priestess represents, at least for me, the queen of swords herself, um, who is a Gemini opposite again, the moon, which represents water signs. Listen to your intuition too, feminine, and the, not only the masculine, we have to do it too. Also have patience. Okay. So now we know what he's going through. We're going to try to patiently wait and bide our time. Consider carefully what you want before acting. Those of you who haven't made a decision yet, we're going to, you know, carefully think about this. And lastly, from the romance angels, engagement to the masculine. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. And feminine, unrequited love. This really coming through for those of you who are stuck in dead end marriages and continuing to try to make them work while at the same time trying to be part of a divine union, like you're, you're, you're like abusing yourselves is what I'm feeling right now. Um, but that's what the card that came. That's the way the card came through. This has to do with these connections that you have um, to other people, beings, energy that is blocking, that is an obstacle to your union. This, okay, maybe the masculine's obstacle. It's your situation, perhaps. I and mean, that's a possibility. That's what this unrequited love is. So it's another guidance to you to end it. But why? Let's get back to positivity. Why are you ending it? Because soulmate, right? Because two of water, because king of water, because nine of water, because engagement, because romantic feelings, because twin flame, right? That showed up before too. Um, Ace of fire. Because of all of that, that's why you're doing this. I hope that you guys enjoy this um, reading and find it helpful. Namaste, angels.